Order in the House. Thank you. Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to take a call on the second reading of this bill. Can I uh, begin by thanking the uh, Select Committee for their consideration of the bill? Can I also thank some of the representatives of the dairy industry who have been helpful to me and to the Labour Party in our understanding of the issues that lie under the bill? Uh, and I'll list a couple of groups. Can I thank Fonterra and the executives who have, um, uh, have addressed the questions that the Labour Party has raised um, openly uh, and helpfully? Uh, and, uh, and thank them for their, their, um, their efforts. Can I also thank the members of the dairy industry who have an alternative view to Fonterra as to the, where the balance properly lies in these considerations for their thoughtful uh, contributions to the issues before us. Mr Speaker, uh, there are two aspects to this bill, as we've heard from other speakers. One relates to the price of milk, uh, and that is to be paid to, uh, by Fonterra to the people that deliver milk to Fonterra, and the division between that total payment as between a milk component and a return on the investment that people have in the Fonterra cooperative. And then the second is the trading amongst farmers of, uh, and trading amongst non-farmers of uh, profit uh, streams from the Fonterra shares. I want to deal uh, firstly with the milk price issue. Mr Speaker, there are a number of reasons why it's important that we get the milk price uh, right. Um, one of the, uh, the things that uh, Fonterra cuts across in New Zealand is because of their size and their uh, effective close to monopoly position in large parts geographically of New Zealand, in fact in large parts of New Zealand they are an absolute monopoly when it comes to the collection of milk. Um, the, uh, the interests of consumers and the long term interests of New Zealand economy and the long term interests of Fonterra mean that we need to get the milk price right. If we get the milk price too high, then we prejudice New Zealand retail consumers of milk. People end up paying too much for milk, uh, and that means that, you know, that somewhere there'll be someone consuming Coca-Cola instead of milk, and that's not good for the health of our country, and it's not fair on consumers who are paying more for their milk than they should otherwise pay. Uh, the milk price in New Zealand is significantly higher than it is in Australia. Uh, and in the UK. And it, it remains an open question as to whether that uh, is um, because of the dominance of Fonterra in New Zealand and uh, the fact that we have inadequate competition in our what's called the fresh milk market but is actually increasingly reconstituted milk even in New Zealand uh, out of season. So um, uh, the ability of competitors to uh, compete against that price of milk is in part reliant upon them being able to acquire milk at a fair price from farmers. Now if farmers uh, paid by Fonterra a higher price for milk than is a fairly competitive price for milk, then those competitors will not be able to enter the market because they would always be at risk of Fonterra changing its pricing methodology um, and undercutting them uh, and effectively taking their market away from them. So um, there, there are very real issues as to why it is, uh, from that perspective, important to get the division between milk price and a return on Fonterra investment right. One of the other reasons it's important to keep that price correct is in the absence of competition, we know that monopolies are inclined to become inefficient inefficient in terms of their price structures, inefficient in terms of their, the choices that they make commercially both within New Zealand and outside of New Zealand. And if Fonterra uh, is not facing competition from uh, 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 entrance and potential entrance, then it as a uh, monopoly will become less efficient over time. Now that's um, standard competition theory. That's why uh, we believe in the Labour Party and the efficiency of 
competitive markets, because if you do have a competitive market, then competition between participants in that market, uh, you know, it's survival of the fittest, those who uh, act uncompetitively or have uh, unduly high cost structures or unduly high profit structures, uh, they fail because other competitors who have more efficient price structures or more efficient cost structures succeed at their cost and take their market share. So, uh, so it's actually in, in, in the New Zealand uh, economy's interest and in Fonterra's long-term interest uh, that there be uh, competition and the potential for competition in New Zealand that's enabled through having a fair milk price and is prevented if you don't have a fair milk price. Now, it's not, I, I'm not yet convinced that we've got this quite right in the legislation. I have heard that, um, and I see, uh, I'm convinced that there are a couple of problems in the price setting methodology for milk. The uh, price for milk that is uh, contemplated under this legislation uh, is predicated upon a theoretical model uh, of, uh, for Fonterra that's not based on the actual efficiency of their milk production but it's based on how efficient it might be if they were acting perfectly. Now, given that Fonterra already is a, is, is the members opposite are shaking their heads, well, you know, I, I, uh, I think that's right uh, with respect, um, based on this, the uh, submissions that I've seen in my reading of the legislation, there is a theoretical product mix and a theoretical efficiency, um, a theoretical efficiency of the plant that Fonterra has that drive this milk model rather than the actual efficiency that they achieve out of their plants and rather than the actual product mix that they choose to produce. And I can't understand why we're using a theoretical construct, construct rather, rather than the actual construct of what it is that they produce, because that seems to me to uh, mean a higher milk price than they can justify in practice based on a theoretical model that's different from what they, uh, they achieve in practice. And I, I'm not yet convinced that that's right. So I think the milk price should be a fair milk price based on a, what a competitive market would be. We don't have a competitive market, therefore we have to have a theoretical construct, but that theoretical construct ought to be based on what is a competitive market <coughs> rather than a theoretical um, um, rendition of it that can't be achieved in practice. Um, so that's the first point I would make in respect to milk price. What does that mean in practice? Um, Mr Speaker, I'm told that um, there is uh, some dispute as to, as to the amount by which the milk price is overstated, um, uh, but that it might be as much as 50 cents per kilogram of milk solids. I know that Fonterra deny that. Their competitors say it's 50 cents per kilogram of milk solids. What that means, and this will be of interest to the Greens, uh, what that means, uh, Mr Speaker, is that... that 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 would have uh, an impact on land price of around $5,000 per hectare, which affects land use choice and has an outcome in terms of whether something's being used for sheep and beef or forestry somewhere or, or dairying. I want to turn in the brief time I've got available to the trading amongst farmers. Uh, there is a national interest in Fonterra that arises from its importance in uh, the New Zealand economy. Uh, that interest goes beyond the interests of the individual farmers and the interests of Fonterra, both of whose interests are important. Um, that uh, national interest is why we have uh, um, um, uh, um, let them out of some of the Commerce Act uh, restrictions that would otherwise have stopped the, the, um, uh, the formation of Fonterra or its continued expansion. Mr Speaker, redemption risk has been overstated, in my opinion. Retention's policy is limiting that. Uh, we've seen uh, Fonterra purchase the Waimati facility that the Russians owned that's gone broke. Um, for people to have somewhere else to put their milk, they've got to have somewhere else that's willing to process it. Uh, I don't think redemption risk is as much as it was stated. And so the Labour Party was concerned to, uh, to limit the ability of these trading monks farmers to grow like Topsy. And we're not satisfied with provisions in the Constitution alone for Fonterra, we think there should be a statutory limit on the number of shares that can be owned by non-co-op members. Uh, and we have suggested a limit of 20%. We would be comfortable with a lower limit. Uh, we've yet to reach agreement with Fonterra. Um, there has been some negotiation with Fonterra, and maybe that will come to something. Maybe it, will, it won't. But, Mr Speaker, there should be a statutory limit on that. Otherwise, we put at risk the long term 
uh, viability of the vertically integrated Fonterra through the tension between the new shareholders and the wet co-op shareholders. A point of order, Honourable Damien O'Connor. Mr Speaker, I, I referred to uh, a report in my speech and it is not uh, part of the submissions of the Select Committee and I just seek leave to table a uh, report leave by uh, Dr Ono van Beckham. Um, it's called Fonterra <coughs> Farmers' Second Vote on TAFA Second Opinion. Leave us all for that purpose. Is there anyone opposed to that course of action? It's the 12th. There appears to be no objection that leave us granted. Mike Saban, I think, was seeking the call. Mr. Speaker.